Hello and welcome to a new edition of News Bands with myself, Bianca Savito. And me, Paul Nesendonyi. Hi, Paul. How are you? Hi, B. I'm very good, thanks. How are you doing? I'm all right. I'm all right. I've got a nice kind of roast in the oven. So I'm looking forward to my my Sunday lunch or very dinner. Nice. Indeed, indeed. As per usual, the agenda is what? Busy? Busy, yeah. Lots busy. of yeah, always a lot of stuff going on. So um, this time around, we wanted to talk about a few things. Um, the first being, and this is kind of, this happened a few weeks ago, but it's still quite pertinent and we wanted to talk about this. And that is the incident at Pure Gym. And this is the um, situation whereby one of their employees took it upon themselves during Black History Month to link a new promotion to Black History, specifically slavery and making um, some very uh, terrible claims around the film 12 Years a Slave, which is a very harrowing film, which I'm sure many of you would have seen, and you you have as well, Paul, whereby he was linking some of the difficulty levels of the exercises in this programme to the fact that, you know, slavery was, well, it was horrific, but how can you link the two things? So clearly there was a big backlash on social media it made um kind of like news headlines as well um and pure gym the last i heard from them they said they were investigating the situation and it's funny because as we were just coming on air i tried to look to find out what the latest is and i can't see anything with regards to how pure gym have um well essentially got rid of this person who did this stuff well, oh you think he should be sacked oh yeah of course oh, i mean oh, god you're it's i mean yeah well, I think it's it's worse because it was a, it was a black employee that did this, and I personally i i just I just don't understand how you can do that as a black person, knowing what slavery is. You can't feign ignorance, for goodness' sake. And also, from my understanding, this isn't the first time that it's happened, but I think in situations like this, I do think you've got to just. I think you've got to come down like a like a ton of bricks and show your customers and the wider public that actually this is not acceptable at all. That's it. It's just not acceptable in my in my book. Zero tolerance. Are you giving them a chance to investigate and understand what happened and where they've come from and look at what they're going to do to to make sure it doesn't happen again. Yeah, I mean, I was w waiting for the outcome of the investigation. I mean, how long does it take to investigate what has happened? Um, we've not heard a dicky bird since then, and I think that's quite bad. I think if you're in a situation where you're under such scrutiny, it's you know made national news headlines, you should make it your priority as a business to come back and respond, but they haven't. I think it's interesting because, as you say, it was a black man who who said this, who clearly hadn't seen the offence in all of this and couldn't anticipate and didn't anticipate what was you know what the backlash would be um but i do think in terms of his response there's been a lot of personal responsibility because as you say we haven't heard at all from pure jim apart from i think they did actually put out an apology in the beginning and say they'd investigate so yeah. i think the chance to investigate and then let's see what they do but this guy has actually been fronting it all himself apart from that he's been you know he was on the radio the other day he was on um, radio one talking about the racist threats that he's had since and the abuse he's been facing not that that makes up for it but um you know no, he's no. been the one that you know he's been putting out social media posts apologizing groveling explaining how he simply didn't understand couldn't see the issue and again not that that makes up for it but i think there's something about when these things happen there's something about the response that people and organizations take and i think we now need to move towards looking at how people respond to things because you know we've talked a lot on this show about you know the, the faux pas and errors and you know just blatant racism in some cases of organizations um and I think we're probably going to see that a lot more. We're, we're looking for it more. We're scrutinizing it a lot more in the light of the um, Black Lives Matters um, right. Mm -hmm. People are a lot more sensitive to it. Um, and so I do feel like, okay, people are going to be looking for it more, but let's also judge people on how they respond afterwards. And I think let's look at their motivation and look at why they did it. And he's put his hands up and said, made a mistake. I'm so sorry. Please, please forgive me. I made no, I didn't mean it. 
and actually what's he doing to put it right and let's see what he learned it does he learn from it and i think that's how i want to judge him rather than just going straight to right we must sack these people because i think we've seen huge companies do this and you know we don't and yeah in the past i might have said oh they need to be sacked but i feel like as we're now all learning and people are being educated and people are understanding the sensitivities of things i'd like to see us give people a bit of a chance to to grow and mature and i think that's what this guy's doing and i do feel sorry for him a bit you know not you know he's been now facing all the racism that he shouldn't be um he should not be the face of pure jim pure jim should be um fronting this and i hope that they are um showing some care for him and looking after him because he's made a mistake he's put his hands up and let's now make sure it's put right yeah i mean obviously all the 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 negativity and the racism that he's facing is totally unacceptable and i don't condone that at all i do question though and this is interesting everything now is about is this a teachable moment what do we learn and it's like how many teachable moments are we willing to kind of accept um i don't know it just for me when i i saw that advert i just thought there's no excuse and so yeah how many teachable moments do you accept and say well actually this person didn't know they've reflected etc and where does the responsibility lay with the organization you're right he definitely I expect pure Jim to be front in this and to take action whether that's sacking him whether that's putting on putting him on a course which is really bizarre because he is a black man so what kind of course would you put him on to teach him about racism this is very odd but yeah I want to see for me I want to see pure Jim take some action and to come back on there we're investigating this situation we're very sorry I need I need more and I think yeah back to your point about Black Lives Matter I think that was a watershed moment and we as kind of like black people or even just people in general that know that this is wrong regardless of the fact that you you are black or not we expect more now from companies and it's not just good enough to say we're sorry what is the action that you're going to take now to as you say put put things right and I'm still waiting for pure gym maybe they think that all you know it's it's brushed under the carpet now and people have, have, have got past that but I certainly scrolled along their Twitter feed to see what what's happened and I don't think it's good enough personally. I think you're right we want to see some action and I think we want the action though to take as long as it needs to take before they've investigated decided what to do so if they came out within a day and said right we've investigated and this is what we're doing i don't know i think i would question that i'd be very suspicious about whether they really have taken the time to reflect and understand but obviously if they take a year over it i know nothing's happened so i don't mm-hmm. know what the right amount of time is but i feel like let's give them the time to to do something about it the other thing is i think this i didn't see this really as a corporate pure gym issue i felt like this was an really? ind- well this was an individual i don't know if it's a franchise or one guy's branch that he's running but this was something that he did separately as an individual and i think it does expose issues with pure jim's franchising system or whatever you call it because there clearly weren't any checks and balances because he you know whatever he's putting out probably should have been checked corporately so i think mm. there's like a corporate pr team that's put something out you know, and run an advertising campaign on TV. This was something he put out on social media that was foolish and stupid. Um, but whether, you know, I wouldn't say it was a corporate issue. And again, that's why I see this as a an individual person. So, you know, you're saying about teachable moments. I don't see this as pure Jim, the big racist company. You know, I, I think you said there's been other issues, but I don't, you know, I was seeing this as a person who's, you know, the local manager of a gym who's done something stupid. Um, I think the other point you made about, um, you know, he's a black person, maybe he should have known better. I think, again, this is something that I think is quite interesting, actually, because different people are offended by different things. Some people would see something and see it as humorous or not, or see it as, you know, it's water off a duck's back. I think it's important that we do highlight things that are offensive, but I think we also have to be aware that 
different people yeah people are different and something that offends one person isn't going to offend other people other people and that's almost a challenge we have now isn't it though that's why i think companies do keep making errors because we keep saying oh if you had more black people you would you know in your company it would make it you wouldn't create so many errors but actually i don't know if that necessarily is true because you could still have a team of black people working on something like we see here and he didn't see the problem so i do think that it is it's just really hard and that's why i think it's about how you deal with the issue once you've identified the backlash or the problem mm-hmm. and how you put things right and how you learn from it and what systems you put in place to try to make sure it doesn't happen again yeah i mean i hear you i still think though that there are universal things which are basically everyone knows that they're wrong um and I don't think you can it's like when you have um you know we talk about the fact that sometimes the BBC for balance has someone that's uh that is countering a view about climate change for example or or conspiracy theorists when it comes to covid or whatever there are some universal truths and it's the same with what's right and what's wrong we know there are things that are wrong and offensive and there are other things which aren't. People know, people know. And, you know, I just, yeah, for me, this whole episode is very disappointing. I do think, I disagree with you about the fact that you think that this is just, this isn't a pure gym issue. It is because it's done, it's pure gym. It's using the name pure gym. Whether or not it was him as an individual doing this stuff, he's still doing it under the the banner of pure gym. So they are still responsible because he's one of their employees. So let's see what happens um I actually I'm going to follow up in our next podcast I'm going to follow up and see if we've heard anything from pure Jim. are you going to phone them are you going well, to I t- I, I'll, I'll tweet that phone, mm-hmm. phone calls are so 1990s Paul who phones anymore but, the, but Twitter is so 2000s it's like oh, <laughs> well anyway I I think they should do something I think it's 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 incumbent upon them to act and do something but let's see sticking with this theme um because it is black history month we're still in october and there's been lots of actually interesting things going on one of the things that i saw um was in relation to starbucks and i quite like this and i know you have differing views but starbucks um are now going to link executive pay to diversity targets which i think is Basically, this is what perfection, what perfection, that's probably too strong. But this is what we strive for, because you can have, (laughs) he's shaking his head. For those of you that can't see us on YouTube, he's shaking his head. This is what, when you talk about making a difference in corporations, in business, you have to ultimately, you have to link things to what matters. And in corporate world, the corporate world, executive pay makes things happen if you link something to executive pay it will happen and then it will trickle down the organization carrot and and stick so from my perspective i think this is a good move if you're linking diversity targets to executive pay you're essentially saying that mr joe blogs if you want to earn more money um this is how you do it you've got to make this stuff happen you've got to have an organization that is more diverse you've got to see people in different positions for me that is something positive because if you look at the pace in which things are traveling people talk about oh you know in time things will change and it won't it won't change people need to wake up this will not happen by just talking and saying nice things you need to actually have something that's a bit more robust and if that's executive pay if that's quotas I'm for it. You need a tipping point. And in order for that tipping point, you need to basically push. And this is a good way for pushing for a positive outcome. What do you think? I, I think <laughs> no, <sir. No>. I, <laughs> of course not. <laughs> the idea is ill-conceived as one of their dodgy, frothy seasonal coffees. It's just really, <laughs> really bad. <laughs> Well, on a, my emotional response when I saw it was, oh, for God's sake, like, uh, again, Starbucks making promises about what they're going to do to capture the headlines. It's Black History Month. So let's use black people and women or let's use diversity as another way of making an announcement. Actually, just get on and do it. Actually, but make they are. making your company good and doing good things for society is mm-hmm. not a reason to keep making announcements and 
just get on and deliver it for a start. Also, this isn't anything new. Starbucks saying, oh, we're doing this. It's nothing new. Other companies have done it. Again, just get on and do it. But also, I just feel like this, there's just some kind of perverse incentive for, for an organization to say, we're not going to be racist. We're not going to be sexist. We're going to recruit equally. And we're going to reward our senior people for doing that. I mean, it's just, yeah. just you stop. You're, they're breaking the law if they're doing these things. And now we're going to say, if you recruit fairly and you encourage people, black people into your workforce, we're going to reward you for it. You should be doing this anyway. These are things that they should be doing anyway. And actually, if you've got senior leaders in your organization that you have to pay to help create the right culture, those senior leaders should be sacked, not rewarded. And that's just, you know, what next? Are we going to say, oh, police, if you stop shooting black people, we're going to pay you to give you a bonus. Oh, people in the film industry, if you stop molesting women, we're going to reward you for it. No, that's not how it should work. We want to create a positive environment for people. And we do. And I just think it's not actually inclusive to reward the people at the top for recruiting people at the bottom that are diverse. In fact, it's completely opposite of inclusivity because all you're doing is making the people at the top richer for bringing in people at the bottom. And it's just wrong. It's just completely wrong. I'm sorry. Wow. That was a bit of a, I'm not going to say rant because that's rude and I'm not rude to you, Paul. That was quite a expression. I think, okay, I hear you. In an ideal world, obviously, you wouldn't have to do this. But we don't live in an ideal world. We don't live in utopia. We don't live in a meritocracy. So we need to do something to level to level up. We need to do something to level up. <laughs> to level up organisations. In order to level up organisations, you need to incentivise people. And you're right, we shouldn't have to do this. But, you know, uh, executives are rewarded for other things. They're rewarded for um, profits. They're rewarded on, you know, cost cutting. They're rewarded for targets on climate change. They're rewarded on so many different key performance indicators. This is just another one. This is identifying the fact that there is this issue. There is this problem. If we don't do anything about it, this problem will continue to exist. So how can we, if you like... um, well, how can we do something that affects real change? And I, I don't think this is this is um, it's not it's not making people at the top rewarding them for the things they should be doing anyway. For me, I, I look at the end result, and if the end result means that we get to a better position quicker, so we're not waiting twenty years time or for the next generation. Mm-hmm. Actually, our generation, we can start to see some equity in corporate life. Then I think it's a good good thing. And I don't see anything wrong with it. So I say, Starbucks, I'll be coming to see you around December time when you start to do your nice eggnog lattes. I support what you're doing. I think it's good. I salute you. I say, Starbucks, you've had long enough to think about this. Since you've had that incident where you had the young boy being um, you know, racially tackled mm-hmm. in, the, in your shop, and this is the best you can come up with you haven't been able to create a culture in your organization and now you're having to bribe people at the top of your organization to just do what is right ethically socially for for your your work environment and for society i just think it's wrong and i think if this is how corporate life is going then then they can keep it i mean i don't want to go in there i i don't see why i i now i i you know, as a black person i might be recruited because i'm now going to help get the the chief exec uh, a bit of an extra five percent ten percent fifty percent bonus at the end of the year you know we're just fetishizing black people and people of color and it's wrong and we're not commodities we're not there to line the pockets of executives we should be getting jobs because we're the right people for the job and those people should be doing that and recruiting us because of our merits not because they want a bonus at the end of the year so paul okay let me put this to you another way so will you are you prepared to wait for two generations after us before you start to see some level of equity in corporate life i'm not prepared to wait but then also right. what happens, what happens if one year um starbucks finds it has it can't afford the bonuses this year do we then we then go back to oh we're now going to be racist again you know this is about creating and change within organizations yeah. that aren't relying on on the bonus being available that year you know if, if they say oh, next year we can't afford bonuses 
then what? We're just going to say, okay, so we can all be racist and sexist again and we can all be homeless. No, 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 no. We want to be recruiting people into jobs at the Hmm. top that are going to create through leadership and through inspiring people and through practice the right cultural environment, not thinking about their pay packets. No, I, I get you, and I'm with you, Paul. I'm with you in a, in a, in Utopia. I'm with you. Else then. <laughs> oh, 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 I'm with you in Utopia, but we don't live in Utopia. So I'm afraid you need to you need to come at this a different different prongs. You need to you need to have a game plan, and you need to to attack this on all fronts and this is just one of the fronts and I, I think it's a good one personally but what happens so in head office it's fine what in the local shop hmm. they're not bothered all you're doing is I mean if I was working in one of those shops I'd be thinking oh more bonuses for them at the top it would I would just be incredibly frustrated I just think that you know we already you know, there's already issues with pay structures in organizations with the people on the top being grossly over incentivized for doing um for work and the people at the bottom earning a lot less and I don't know what the issue is at Starbucks but I just think why why are you making this why are you making this more of an issue but as I said at the beginning also just get on and do it stop telling me what you're going to do just get on and do it and let's just see the change You'll see the change. You'll see the change, Paul. You'll... <laughs> Paul is going to remain sceptical on this front. We'll just have to see. Hmm? Sorry, I didn't hear you. We won't see change with this, I'm afraid. Well, let's 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 wait and see. Let's keep on watching, Paul. I think they are talking about other things like mentoring schemes and that yeah. kind of thing. They need to change. But they are the things that actually you need people to do those things because they believe in them and they know that you know it's the right thing to do not because i want to earn more money as a as a chief exec or executive Mm, well different perspectives there paul different perspectives let's move on let's move on let's talk about this darren grimes uh incident which you wanted to talk about this by the way not me but we'll talk about it darren grimes so So this is, is he a journalist or some sort of pseudo journalist or what, what, what is he? He's a right wing kind of commentator. Is that, is that fair? I think he, yeah, he's got a blog yeah. or a channel. He just seems, and he's yeah. a director. He's, um, yeah. he's campaign, didn't he? I can't remember the name of his group. He had a whole load of trouble as well with the electoral commission. and. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. So essentially he had David Starkey that appeared um on his youtube channel and this was this probably happens a couple of months ago now and david starkey i won't repeat what he said but essentially david starkey made racist comments um on this program and you know i didn't listen to the whole interview i just listened to segments and it wasn't a particularly probing interview because when these racist statements were made by david starkey um Grimes um didn't really challenge what he was saying but I put that down to the fact that a or I don't know there's various reasons but essentially he didn't challenge what Starkey was saying anyway that's happened but since then he has now this is Grimes has been the subject of a police investigation for inciting um racial racial hatred I believe off the back of this interview and it's been really interesting because there's been lots of comments around the fact that this is about um freedom of speech and what did Grimes do I mean the Starkey made racist comments on his program but then why was Grimes um arrested and his facing charges around inciting racial racial hatred when he didn't actually do that himself and personally, you know, I don't I'm not of the same political persuasion at all as as, as as Grimes. But I do think it does raise questions about why he was arrested. It was a pretty poor interview from what I heard. He didn't challenge the racist comments that were made. But that in itself is not a reason to arrest someone and to, to, to have them up on these charges. So I think for me, it kind of um, damages really what it just damages the freedom of expression element i think and also takes away from i don't know the role of journalists and if he's a journalist is he not a journalist i think it's i think it's damaging i don't think it was the right thing to do that he's facing these charges what about you i think i agree i think that 
it is really scary that you can have someone on interview them and be arrested potentially for what they say you know you say a lot of outrageous things that i take issue with but you know i don't think i should be arrested because you've said those things i think journalism is about getting to you know asking questions probing questions um grimes is a terrible journalist he he's but then he's not on the bbc you know if he was on the bbc we'd certainly expect him to probe and ask mm. more questions um but actually he's not he's not really a journalist he's not on the bbc he didn't have the responsibility to to try and give any balance um and i just think i do question how the police have got the time and resources for this i do think it though does bring up the question of actually if there is something on social media that you're not happy with who do you go to you know in this case the police seem to have stepped in if it was on B on tv or bbc itv you could go to ofcom um yeah but you know, there's actually a lot worse stuff on social media, but actually I don't see this as a police issue because even no. if there was something to answer, I don't know that it's the police that should be dealing with it because, and racial hatred, yeah, as far as I know, we, there wasn't any kind of rioting or anything like that on the streets. The, you know, people watched it, they were angry, but actually I don't think that many people will have seen it. But um, yeah, it just seems to be a waste of time and um, not very helpful. No, it'll be interesting to see what happens and how far this goes, whether or not it will be dropped. Um, yeah, it seems like a very odd thing, in my opinion, and in yours too, as well, by all accounts. We actually agree on something. We do. It makes a change, doesn't it? There you go. You can be right sometimes. <laughs> very funny, Paul. Very funny. <laughs> well, something else we wanted to talk about is Trump. The craziness that's going on, and actually it's not that long now to go until the election, uh, the US presidential election, and this whole scenario with Trump having COVID, being immune, the whole uh, drive around in his car to wave at people. I mean, it is crazy um, what is happening, and this is an election like any other. I mean, what are your thoughts as to how it's all going and just about Trump in general? I actually think it's absolutely bonkers and crazy and I did actually wonder whether he was actually making it up that he's got COVID and was going to turn around and say well it's all been fake news haha <laughs> I got you and this is why I must get rid of the media or something um, but he's really managed to turn this around and use it to get the headlines no one's really been talking about the opposition and Biden it's all been about Trump um, you know, at, at one point he even refused to turn up to one of the debates and whether it was planned or not, this almost seems like a clever way of just taking over, you know, the headlines and the news agenda. Um, but it is actually scary, though, that there will be people that follow him, believe him and will stop wearing masks because of him that have turned up to his rallies and put themselves at risk. Um and it's just, yeah, it's very, very worrying where things are going to go for that country, I think. It is. And I think, sadly, regardless of the outcome, I don't see it being straightforward and peaceful, sadly. I think there's so much hate that has been whipped up, um, you know, so much. Yes, yeah, just so much hate. Um, you know, we're really starting to see the, 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 the belly of the beast, so to speak, in America. And I do worry about what will happen if he does lose, will he kind of like walk away? Because he's, he's intimated that basically he won't just like accept the result if he loses. Um, it is, it's, it's quite dangerous, I think, what's going on. I think, though, there are people in the polls, and of course we won't know until the results are actually out, but there are, it seems as though Biden is actually starting to do quite well. And I think people have started to see that he's actually been, um, Trump, this has been quite irresponsible with regards to, covid and how he's handled his own so-called um illness and also the nation as a whole but um i guess we just have to wait to see what happens uh, i'm sure we'll talk about the election um when it happens in a in a few weeks time yeah. but um that yeah indeed but um we're gonna wrap up the show We've had a lot to talk about. We hope you've enjoyed it. As per usual, you can catch us um, at Twitter at Newsbants. And we're also on Instagram at Newsbants. 
Also, we're on YouTube now, so Newsband Podcast, look us up. Please do leave us a review. We love reviews. Um, Until next time, uh, we look forward to speaking with you soon. Take care. Bye. Bye.